Bass are primarily visual predators. So the first thing that an effective bait will do is usually stimulate the fish by vision to come and investigate what it's looking at. So baits that have really good visual cues are really effective at drawing fish in and the starting point for getting fish to feed. So the challenge we were given was to take a line of baits that already had really good visual cues and try and develop a scent that would add a positive stimulus for smell and taste for bass within these baits. Historically, anglers will run across a wide variety of things in the aisle where you can purchase baits that have scents. Many of these are actually things that might appeal to humans and their sense of smell or taste, whereas what appeals to a fish are actually compounds that the fish would normally be looking for when it's trying to feed. The biggest challenge was identifying key components that you could add to a bait to stimulate a bite without just throwing the kitchen sink at it. And so our goal was to find kind of the most effective with the least amount of ingredients necessary. If you understand how the senses of smell and taste work in fish, the receptors only work when the compounds being delivered to them are dissolved in water. So if compounds are in oil, they will not actually activate the receptors because they're essentially unavailable to them. To see how a fish really responds to a bait will take it within its mouth and really taste it. Uh, you can see them kind of moving it around their mouth, getting the, the uh, components and seeing if it is something they want to eat or not. It needs to get a positive stimulus from the taste receptors in order to make the final step, the final commitment, and engulf the bait. One of the key things about the marketplace is that the vast majority of baits have not undergone rigorous scientific experimentation. Most uh, companies that produce these baits do not have active research labs uh, with scientists that have years of experience conducting experiments and knowing how to properly determine whether something is an effective positive stimulus or not. My role was to do the day-to-day -day experiments with the fish, starting off with making the pellets that we used to test our different scents. We used a neutral gel base, so that allowed us to test just the scents and exclude any visual or textural component to the bait. All our pellets had the same color, same texture, but we would vary what components of uh, scent were within these pellets. We would always make sure we compare them to a pellet that had no scent to make sure we could compare you know, what was an improved uh, performance from the fish and what might have a detrimental effect on the fish. Every day we would go in and we randomly assign pellets to different fish to make sure we weren't just getting one fish that may happen to be extra hungry on that day. And we would perform these trials over and over again to make sure we were getting uh, enough samples that we really had confidence that these were true results we were seeing and the components we were adding to these pellets were actually making a difference in benefiting the performance of the bait. In order to collect our data, for each fish we would drop three pellets to make sure it was a consistent response across three pellets. The way we scored these were on three different bases. The first one was, does a fish eat the pellet or not? That's kind of the big first step of if they're going to like it, is if they eat it. The second one was, if they didn't eat it, how many times would they try it? There were some fish that would come up to it, smell it, and decide they didn't like it right off the bat while there were other fish that would take that pellet in their mouth, try it multiple times, taking it in, spitting it out, taking it in, spitting it out repeatedly. And the third one was how long they would hold it within their mouth, really thinking about if this was something they wanted to eat or not. Uh, so using a combination of these three different measures, we would score pellets and different scents to determine their overall effectiveness. Well, we wanted to make sure that we were testing this in a way that we got really robust, reliable results. Every fish and every trial we performed, every pellet that was dropped was recorded, brought back to our lab, 
and we played it on a monitor where we could move frame by frame to really determine exactly when a fish took that pellet in their mouth, how long it stayed in their mouth, and if they ate it or not. This way we were able to score all of our trials consistently and get really reliable data and results at the end of it. We then took the best candidate compounds and we spent a long time doing hundreds of experiments to examine the ones that actually work most effectively. You then need to figure out the right concentrations or amounts and ratios to put in the baits to get the maximum response. Not every stimulant can you just keep adding more and more and keep getting better responses. A lot of these stimulants operate on a curve where there's an actual peak and an optimal value that you want to add, after which you start to lose effectiveness. So each component in our baits has been tested to make sure that we're using the proper amount and not more than is needed and not any less. What has happened in the marketplace is that there are baits that have scents that are essentially unavailable to the fish because they're in oil-based delivery vehicles. There are also scents that are in baits that don't have a lot of good action. When we developed our original scent, we used a water-based gel to deliver the scent to the fish where it was really the most effective and the fish could access it most easily. The second challenge we had was to then be able to apply that to you know, traditional proven materials that are used in the fishing industry um, and to get the same type of response we saw in our gel. So we worked with our final recipe and we tested different concentrations in these proven materials to see where again that optimal value was before it was too much and actually became overstimulating for the fish. The approach that we took was to examine a vast area of the scientific literature to look for potential compounds that stimulate feeding in different species of fish. And so we developed a series of potential compounds to do experiments with and then we spent a lot of time running experiments with the fish, letting the fish tell us what they like best, and eventually coming up with the product that is bait fuel. And that was the big thing we were trying to find was something that wasn't just as good as uh, a regular bait, it actually improved the performance. As an angler, I'm really excited that we're now able to kind of get that one-two punch, combining both the proven visual effectiveness of traditional baits with a scientifically proven scent that's going to make fish want to bite more and hold on longer.